Welcome to the Fantasy Football Forge. My name is Steve, and it is time to look at the Conference Championship DraftKings value picks for DFS plays. And this week, I do want to just up front as a reminder here, these are value plays. I have them in order of the most furthest to the right column. These will also be up on my website, www.theffforge.com, link down in the description as of Thursday. And I give that reminder about the value aspect because just because somebody's a great value, that doesn't always mean that they're going to be the greatest play. Pure fantasy points is ultimately what matters. And with that, I hope that you had a better week than I did last week. Not my best week. At the end of this video, I will also have uh, several lineups in this video for you to check out and kind of get an idea of how I'm working around it this week. But let's just get on to explaining this chart in case this is the first video you are seeing of mine. Right over here, this is the matchup uh, gauge. So green's going to be good, red's going to be bad, that's going to be the same all the way across this little chart here. There's uh, several factors that go into this, and for the other positions, there are individual factors like the quality of the opportunities that players get and how well they do when they get their opportunities. Some of those factors will also um, be involved in this temperature gauge is what I call them. Then we have a lower expectation fantasy points scored, a higher expectation of fantasy points scored for the quarterbacks, for instance, are expected to score within this range over 50% of the time. And these are my own projections. Then I take these projections, divide it by the DK price for this week, and we get ourselves some of the values. So this is the lower points per dollar spent. So the higher that the points are for every dollar that you spent, obviously the better. Uh, pay attention more so to the color than the actual value within the sales, but still wanted to provide that. Ultimately, I have then averaged the lower and higher uh, values there for an average value. And that is the order of which these players are. Let's just start off here with the quarterbacks. And we have Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, Brock Purdy, Patrick Mahomes going this week. As far as Patrick Mahomes goes here down at the bottom of the value chart, I'm probably, I don't know that I'll have any exposure to him this week. That may not be smart. Uh, with the injury and everything, if there's ever a week for Patrick Mahomes not to live up to expectations, it's going to be a week where he's playing on a high ankle sprain. That's not going to be helpful. He is Patrick Mahomes, however. As far as the other guys go, my favorite value here is going to be Joe Burrow. He's the third most expensive, third, second least expensive guy out of the four there. And uh, he has a great matchup compared to the rest of them. Really thinking Joe Burrow's the way to go. I'm going to have about half of my lineups probably exposed to Joe Burrow. And then... Um, Maybe a, just a touch more on the Jalen Hurts over Brock Purdy there, but Brock Purdy at 5,300, very cheap. If he can, if he can pop off, that's great. But even if he doesn't pop off, and if he can at least, you know, be a great value there, hopefully I can make up for that elsewhere. And so I'll definitely be riding on the Brock Purdy train again a little bit, even though last week was disappointing. And this week, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what I'm expecting. I think Philadelphia, I think it's a very similar matchup to last week. Brock Purdy could have done worse last week. Dallas missed out on some opportunities. I have videos where I talk about each of the games that will be out this week that you can check out from further thoughts. But ultimately, I mean, Philadelphia is just like a better version of Dallas, like what Dallas wants to be. And so um, definitely concerned for San Francisco this week. But also the, they're they're great so we'll see let's move on to the wide receiver value picks and this week brandon Ayuk hopped himself all the way on up to the top for the value so great for him i'll definitely be exposed to him once again this week uh there are some concerns there going up against philadelphia so try not to overdo it but there's a decent chance that san francisco is going to have to open up the offense this week in order to keep up with the eagles that's very much possible in which case Ayuk. Seems to be his um, favorite downfield target, really. Then A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, both in here as great value options. Uh, one real quick note on A.J. Brown. I will be uh, having a little bit more exposure to Devonta Smith than A.J. Brown myself because if you noticed last week, pretty much every time that A.J. Brown was targeted, caught a ball, whatever the case, he's sitting there grabbing at one of his knees, and that's been my Biggest concern with A.J. Brown That's part of the reason why uh, even just last draft season for regular fantasy football, I wasn't overly uh, 
trying to, to get him on my team. And that really comes down to injury concerns that I have for AJ Brown. I think that is why the Tennessee Titans decided to move on from him as far as a long-term future, that they're concerned that AJ Brown's probably on a career path to be similar to Calvin Johnson's, which it's a great career, but also meaning that it'll get cut short because of his knees. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope AJ Brown's around for a long time because he is probably my single favorite wide receiver out in the league. I think he is incredibly talented. Yeah, so uh, that concerns me, and I'm thinking there's a decent chance that Devonta Smith continues the role that he's been on for some time now and maybe is the higher scoring player than AJ Brown, but you can't rule out AJ Brown. He's had one heck of a season. Then we have Tyler Boyd here in the next value spot. Uh, you know, nothing wrong with that. T Tyler Boyd goes off some weeks, and so I definitely want to have some exposure to T. Boyd at 3800 Also a great price there for the top end potential that he provides every now and again. Just a quick note on Debo Span Samuel. I think he would be higher up on this list if I did my projections a little differently. Thing is, I uh, decided to have, you know, rushing stats included in my projections. And what I did when I did that was uh, for the lower expectation, I removed those rushing stats. And for everybody else, that's perfectly fine. But there is one player who, especially this time of the season, is almost guaranteed to have some groundwork each and every game. Uh, as far as wide receivers go, there's one player, and that is Debo Samuel. So this lower expectation here, I'm, you know, you got to think that he'll have at least 15 rushing yards at a minimum. That would push this just a little bit higher, and I believe would push Debo Samuel then up ahead of Tyler Boyd, maybe even Devonta Smith here, who knows. I'm thinking of it like that, just a little insight into Debo. I, I would consider him over Tyler Boyd as far as just straight value goes. And obviously, he's got a great upside himself there. Then Jamar Chase and T. Higgins are hanging down here. T. Higgins is a similar story to Tyler Boyd, just with a higher floor, more consistent, and probably really a higher ceiling, ultimately, too. Sometimes he goes absolutely off. It's been a little while, so it might be about that time. As far as Miko Hardman goes, honestly, I just I kind of hope he's not playing this week again. That just makes things easier here as we get to Kansas City Alley down at the bottom. I would much rather he didn't play because that means Kadarius Tony should definitely be locked in for some more work. And in that case, I think be a pretty darn good value at 3700 despite what the math comes out to here based on his usage. It's been increasing his... Uh, you know, kind of at an all-time high right now for his usage with the team. And if there's ever a week where some of the gadget stuff is going to come out, it's probably next week while uh, Mahomes is injured. So uh, I do like Kadarius Tony quite a bit this week. I think I like him the most out of the bunch. But once again, if Mecole Hardman is playing, uh, I get a little bit more concerned about that and then I want to have a little bit of exposure to Miko Hardman and a little less exposure to Kadarius Tony. both of them ultimately around like 10% ownership, something like that for me, which means one or two of my lineups. Yeah, I'm not too excited about the Kansas City receivers this week. Which brings us to the running back value plays, and Christian McCaffrey has been outseated this week by Joe Mixon, who comes in as the best value play. I think there's a decent opportunity yet again for him this week to have a solid week. Did improve on his efficiency, which is actually not represented really in my most recent projections last week. Uh, not a whole lot, at least. And so that's great. Uh, that's impressive. If he could continue that, I think he'll definitely live up to being a great value at 6,500 this coming week. No arguments there. No arguments with Christian McCaffrey. I, I don't like the running backs a whole lot this week, uh, so I really want these two the most as far as my exposure to them because Miles Sanders going up against San Fran, really, really good rushing defense, and Miles doesn't bring any kind of receiving value to the table. Very few games does he have more than like one target, two targets, one catch. I don't think he'll live up to, um, I mean, he's 5,200. He's at a pretty decent price, cheaper than both the Kansas City guys. Still, uh, at least one of the Kansas City guys should outscore him. And so I feel similar uh, about Isaiah Pacheco as I do Miles Sanders. Just not as tough of a defense, but Pacheco is in more of a split workload than Miles Sanders is usually. Jerick McKinnon, similar thoughts to last week. Uh, you know, 
get the good value uh, if he has a great game. That's awesome. I do have some concerns as to I feel like a lot of the plays that I see for Jarek McKinnon coming from Patrick Mahomes are throws from weird angles, throws where Patrick Mahomes is on the run. And so, um, you know, might that hamper things, the connection between the two and just the amount of balls that get thrown McKinnon's way ultimately if Patrick Mahomes isn't that mobile? Very much possible. But also, we're talking about Andy Reid here. They're going to scheme up some stuff to work around the lack of mobility. What does that look like? I don't know. And that brings us to Samaj P. Ryan, Elijah Mitchell, the best two backups. I think, I really don't think uh, the backup in Philly usually gets used until they have a lead on the opponents. Usually, Miles Sanders is out there while they're fighting for the most part. But um, Samaj P. Ryan, Elijah Mitchell, Samaj uh, beat them out in value. You see their projections are very, very similar here. A little bit less for Samaj, so that makes sense that he would be the better value pick out of the two. Either way, I'll have a little bit of exposure to each of them, one or two lineups out of my 10 to 20 lineups that I end up having. Which brings us to the tight ends, and because of my lack of love for the running backs, you will see I'm going to have a fair amount of uh, two tight end sets. So this week, Hayden Hurst gets the honors as the number one tight end as far as value goes. He's only cost 3k on DK's pricing, so... That's great. Matchup doesn't look so great for him, but some of these factors are out of date that probably would have improved after last week to make that temperature gauge look just a little bit better. Unfortunately, Player Profiler doesn't update their all their stats, and I don't know how they determine some of the numbers that I end up putting into these temperature gauges. They're a little bit more subjective numbers, I think. So I, I, I just left them as it was per you know, the entirety of the season, since I have no way really of updating those numbers. But um, yeah, I like Hayden Hurst quite a bit this week, and uh, I'm going to increase my exposure from the lineups that we're about to go over compared to how often I have them down there. Definitely ex- plan to get more exposed to Hayden Hurst. And other than that, Dallas Goddard here in the second spot, I have no, I, I agree with that. You know, I love the discount that Dallas Goddard seems to always come at. You just hope you get the touchdown on top of the big yardage plays. Then uh, Travis Kelsey here, you know, he, he's probably worth spending the money for. You looked at his, uh, the numbers here that I have and his cost he is more than any of the wide receivers, I do believe. Yes, he costs more than all of the wide receivers. But he's right in there with A.J. Brown, Jamar Chase. So he's like the third best wide receiver uh, just in terms of pure points. And that's going to bring us to George Kittle here at the bottom outside of a few nice big plays. The trend tended to stick there with the fact that he, and this actually bears out in the stats, um, he tends to get used in the blocking game more when Tebow Samuel is healthy and thus he tends to be less productive as a fantasy player while Debo is healthy. And last week he was on the field more than he normally is, um, which I looked up and was similar to earlier on in the season when Debo was healthy. He was on the field a little bit more, but he was running fewer routes in each case. Being on the field is great, but as a tight end, if you're sitting there blocking, you really can't get fantasy points. So um, that said, I I still uh, have... No fear putting George Kittle out there at 5200 Not a terrible price for the upside that you could potentially get. And I do think that that potential is still very much there, depending on game plan. They just seem to normally game plan it more towards their receivers and Debo um, with Kittle blocking. So now, let's look at my lineups. And last week I named them and it really made sense. Uh, it's not going to make so much sense this week. So we'll just go starting off here with the, the value stack. So went with Joe Burrow. And right over here you'll see five Burrows. Like I said, I'm, I want like half exposure to Joe Burrow. I think he's a great value cost price for what you're going to get for him. Potentially the highest scoring quarterback of the week. And so... Uh, I'll be offsetting all the not burrows that I have in these other lineups that I'm already showing you that I already have entered into DK uh, with more burrow. Then we have McCaffrey Sanders. It is a value stack because I have burrows two least uh, costing targets here in Tyler Boyd and Hayden Hurst. Open for some big days between those two. Maybe not such great days for Jamar 
and T. Higgins for this lineup. Then I have A.J. Brown, Debo Samuel, spent up for Travis Kelsey. That's where I was able to kind of do the value stack to spend up for him. And then you got Bengals DST. You'll see only two DSTs down here, and I really do just feel the most comfortable with these two. Bengals Eagles. The next one I have here is going to be called the Philly Special. We have Jalen Hurts, Devonta Smith, and Dallas Goddard in that lineup, followed by McCaffrey, McKinnon, then Jamar Chase, Brandon Ayuk, and uh, we already went over these two, followed by Kadarius Tony down there, and the Eagles defense. There's my first Hurts lineup, then we got the Fat Stack. Basically, I started this one with, um, well, knowing I would probably go Purdy, but I wanted to see how many big hitters I could pay up for, and the ones that I feel the most comfortable with. So McCaffrey, Jamar Chase, um, we'll see here. Actually, I do have a very similar lineup with A.J. Brown, but I, I ultimately think that um, I expressed my concerns earlier in the video about A.J. Brown. So then Devonta Smith and Travis Kelsey spent up for, then spent, I guess you could say, up a little bit for the second tight end here with the Dallas Goddard. Um, Samaj P. Ryan had to be smashed in here ultimately to save a little bit of money. Same with MVS here. And hey, you never know. And then the Bengals D. And I do have a very similar lineup. You can pretty much play around with these uh, three in this lineup between uh, MVS, Smith, and so five players in total. Um, a fair bit of shuffling around with them can be done. Same with uh, even the defense. Then you can spend up a little bit more for like KC here. Just like in this lineup, you can spend up a little bit more over the Eagles. So um, AJ Brown, Juwan Jennings over MVS and Devonta Smith is a different lineup that I think I... I don't want to say I like it more than this one, but I like it at least just as much. Fat Stack 2.0, I'll call it. Then we've got the uh, Fat Philly, and so after messing around with this one so much, I kind of was like, oh, I think I can do better. And so you kind of smash these two together. We get the Fat Philly here with Jalen Hurts in at quarterback. Definitely like that more than the Purdy. Then we get Mixon, so went discount a little bit there at the top running back spot so that way that money could save us from guys like MVS and Samaj P. Ryan by getting McKinnon in here then we have Demonte Smith, Brandon Ayuk, Jamar Chase, George Kittle and Dallas Goddard so went a little bit discount there at the tight end as well stepped it up a little bit for the Eagles defense stepped it up a little bit with Ayuk and McKinnon and the quarterback as well of course so um, I do like that as a more well-rounded lineup, uh, but you know these are the types of lineups that if if it works, it, you know if MVS and P Ryan and all the other guys then also work out, they could get you like that number one spot. This you know somebody else is going to have this lineup out there, that's for sure. Then we have the uh, skinny Sal. Uh, it's it's the fat Philly special. I don't know the the fat stack. What do you? I don't know. We'll call it the skinny Sal though. And that's probably because I'm going to even more discount in some ways than the Fat Philly. Di differently, that was So, yeah, Brock Purdy up here. Then it spent back up for McCaffrey, who I really want. And I got Mixon in here. And I really want these two running backs. So happy to get them in my lineup. And I think I was able to, um, you know, also spent up for Travis Kelsey yet again here. Then it got my good value play with Brandon Ayuk. T. Higgins went discount, hoping for the best there. Juju, didn't like him last week, don't like him this week, but he has his weeks here and there, and in this matchup, that's definitely possible. Stack that with George Kittle for the double tight end, you'll see yet again. And uh, went a little bit different here, grabbed the Chiefs defense for once for the skinny Sal lineup. And so, um, I don't know, I don't know which one I like the most. Let me know what you're, what you're feeling here. I, I don't think it's the value stack, I think it's like... The Philly Special, the Fat Philly, or the Skinny Sal, to me, seem to be like the best lineups. And I, for the Skinny Sal, there is a little bit of cash left to play with, and I do want to point out that you can also... Um, and like I said, I am going to be essentially doubling the amount of lineups that I have. So right now I have five or six. So I'll end up with uh, six, uh, 12, 13-ish lineups. And in doing so, um, most of those lineups, I will be exposing myself to Burrow. It looks like I may have even two more Brock Purdy lineups already. And so I want to get 
I want to have at least the same amount of Hertz lineups to Purdy lineups because I'm not super confident in Purdy. Uh, do you explain? Do you plan on doing like two of those six? We'll say new lineups later this week with Kelsey in it. So, um, what would that be about thirty five percent exposure or so to Kelsey? And I plan on having a uh, keeping roughly the same ratio that I have up here with a uh, three. Devonta Smiths to every two AJ Browns sticking somewhere in that ratio. So those are just some of my thoughts. Um, like I said, let me know which of these lineups you like the most, what you might change about them, who are some of the players that I didn't like that you like. Let me know these things. Um, you know, sometimes I get a little nervous about putting players into my lineups that I don't like, and sometimes it bites me in the butt. So you got a good argument for someone, or if you just want to express your opinion on someone that you do like, or you, if you want to agree with me on something, you can. But um, thank you very much. These videos have been, this one last week was quite successful, so I hope that it helps some of you win some of that cash money, and let's do it again this week. Peace out.